we now have this light shining in our hearts, that we ourselves are like fragile clay pots containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. Now, that being true, because this power is from God, Paul goes on and he says, what happens is we are pressed on every side. We have troubles. We, we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but we're not driven to despair. He says, we, we are hunted down, but we're never abandoned by God. We're knocked down, but we're never destroyed. Why? Because we carry about in our body the suffering of Jesus Christ. Because it's not about me. It's about Jesus. And when we become professional, we forget about that. Okay, what would worship be like if it was void of professionalism? What would it be like? One of the first erosions confronting the early church had to do with professionalism. It is addressed quickly and powerfully, and the spirit of the persecuted volunteerism is maintained, and it results in bold and committed Christians. Question, have the influences of professionalism caused erosion in your heart? Have they caused erosion in our body? Have we, have we allowed ourselves to be drawn in to the performance mode so much that we miss the wonder of God's ability to work? It's time to reclaim the wonder of living as the volunteer army of the victorious one. We need to reclaim that. Imitate the pre-erosion Christians and stay vibrant. I'm going to give you uh, how we're going to do this. How are we going to accomplish that? I want to give you some things from our text as we end. Number one, avoid the limitations of stuff. And I chose the word stuff very carefully. Stuff. Because there's so much that fits in there, I just chose stuff. You know, the, Peter and John saw beyond the limitations of money and worked a miracle that saved 2,000 people that ended in the salvation of 2,000 people without spending a penny. I wonder how many things as a church, as individuals, we have not done because we make the stuff of money the most important thing. Don't know how. Not educated. You know, there's even good stuff that gets in the way of our volunteerism. Good programs get in the way. And we, we conduct classes to try to teach our young people and adults. And, and, you know, sometimes classrooms are not what we'd like for them to be. You ever stepped into a classroom and it's been demolished because somebody else used your classroom? And all of a sudden, what happens is, is we, we allow ourselves to become professional about the stuff. And we're all in a huff about who, this, what, that. We need to put this in. Oh, I, I, we need to make a rule. There needs to be legislation happening here. We need another, we need a principle that keeps this from ever going. What in the world are we doing? Sanhedrin. Let's make another rule. Why are we teaching? Because we love our classroom? Because it's so beautiful? We're teaching because of the truth of Jesus Christ that changes lives. Jesus taught in deserts. <laughs> you see, stuff can get in our way quickly. We need to maintain a vision that is beyond ourselves. Amazed how Peter and John, again, they step out of fear into full confidence because they didn't see it as being about them anymore. It was now about Jesus. Stay Christ-focused. Above all, stay connected. Stay connected. I wonder why Peter and John went to the temple to pray. Why not just Peter? Why not just John? Why Peter and John? You get the point that maybe some of the significance of maintaining the spirit of volunteerism is staying connected? Peter and John went to the temple. And then what do they do when it's all over? Now, we didn't read this part. After they're released from the Sanhedrin, where do they go? They go to the other gathering in a house. And they walk in, and it says they report to them everything that happened to them. And immediately, they all began to pray. Almost sounds like it was a unison prayer. They quoted some psalms, and, and they began, they, they quote this all together. And then, what does the Bible say? The place where they all stood was shaken. Why? Because of professionalism. We did it just right. No. Because they were connected. They were connected. Let me tell you something. You know, there are people that weren't here this morning who will never know about Ivan and, and Jim. The people that weren't here this morning 
will never know the challenge of being a windshield or a bug. You see, in our professional viewpoints, we argue, do I have to be at Bible class? There are people who will never know what CC said in class this morning. Never know that. There are people who are going to miss tonight when we talk about grace-fed faith. The people never hear that. It would be the only time in history that what is said and what is expressed will ever be expressed in the way it's going to be expressed. And we sit around in our professionalism and say, well, you know, I don't think I need Bible class. Really? I thought, you know, second service I went once, why would I need to go again? You know, my neighbors, my neighbors tell me, you know, go to church too much, and that's a bad thing for you. We need to stay connected. Remind me, dear Lord. Be as counter-cultured culture, as is called for. Peter and Don didn't go looking for a fight, but they said, you know what? I'm not going to obey you, I'm going to obey God. And in all of this, it says God was glorified. Why? Because Peter and John held their ground. No erosion. Stepping out of being professional pupil and back into a dazzling disciple is no easy task, but it is a possible one. Let it never be said of any of us that we've become so heavenly minded that we are no earthly good. We need to maintain the spirit that we were converted by. You know, this, um, this last week, I, I ordered an Amazon, an item on Amazon, as I do periodically. And I was, I was a little concerned because it described the item, and it was the item I wanted, and then there was a picture, and it was not the picture of the item that I wanted, but the description was accurate. And so I, I ordered a, a master window switch for a 1999 Nissan Quest. And the reason I ordered it is because this was a fantastic buy. I've been watching these things, you know, and this, this was a good deal. So I ordered this, and it came in the mail, and it came yesterday, and I brought it in, I sat on the table, and Becky goes, what's that? And I said, well, I, I think it's not what I ordered. I hadn't even opened it yet, but I could tell by the package, I said, I think it's not what I ordered. So I opened it up, and sure enough, it was not at all what I'd ordered. It was a solid brass cigarette lighter. <laughs> Beautiful. I mean, I opened this up, and it immediately took me back to, the, to, the, to the, the childhood memories of when my parents smoked, and they carried those kinds of lighters. And there's a sound, and if you've ever heard that sound, if you've been around somebody that uses a lighter, it's that click open, and then there's that clunk shut. And I'm thinking, I would like to hear that. But this thing is taped closed, and I didn't want to untape it, so I just left it. But beautiful, beautiful, solid brass cigarette lighter. But it wasn't what I ordered. And so I got online. Anyhow, who knows where the end of that story is going to be. Here's the point. You know what Jesus has ordered from us? He doesn't ask for professionalism. He wants the heart. He wants our spirit. He wants us to be real. He doesn't want us to be concentrating on how good we are. He wants us to know how bad we are and how badly we need him. And if we don't get that... We can come every Sunday and sit in the pew. And instead of giving our Savior an instrument that has some purpose, raising a window up and down, we offer him a solid brass cigarette lighter. It's pretty. Can't even use it. It's taped shut. But oh, it's so right. <laughs>